Welcome back. In the second part of the presentation of controller for uh, solving the trajectory tracking problem in the joint space for robot, we will consider two types of further uh, control design. The first one is uh, uh, based on a non the full nonlinear model of the system, but achieves a global asymptotic tracking of the trajectory without requiring complete cancellation of its dynamic. The second type of controller is instead uh, based on very little information about the model dynamics and uh, achieves again a perfect reproduction of the desired trajectory uh, in case the trajectory is repetitive so that we can allow uh, repeated trials in order to improve the performance. So with this in mind, uh, let's start with the first uh, controller. Uh, it takes the following form like it is written in the, in the slide. Uh, indeed, it's similar to uh, the feedback linearization controller, but it are, there are some uh, differences. First of all, the uh, proportional and derivative terms with respect to the error are not pre-multiplied by the inertia matrix. And then you see that uh, there are some variables that are computed on the desired quantities. Uh, in this particular case, I added also a viscous term, a, fric a friction, a viscous friction term, in order to uh, highlight if uh, such terms should be evaluated on the actual velocity Q dot, or rather, like it, they should, on the desired velocity. Now, uh, there are a, a couple of uh, assumptions that we made. Uh, we assume that in this control law, we use a special factorization of the coherence and centrifugal term, namely the one that guarantees that the matrix M dot minus 2s is Q symmetric. Since we are using uh, this um, factorization in the design of the control law, of course, we have to make sure that this condition is satisfied. Uh, for the PD gains, we use the uh, we have the usual uh, standard assumption, so positive definiteness and without loss of generality, uh, symmetric gain matrices. Now, uh, we would like to show that this is, in fact, another uh, controller that uh, achieves uh, global asymptotic stability of the error uh, position and velocity, so that the, the guarantee asymptotic trajectory track. The proof is uh, much more involved than in the case of uh, feedback linearization. Essentially, in feedback linearization, we use a nonlinear control in order to cancel all non-linearities. Non so, uh, on the linear side of the resulting problem, we stabilize uh, the uh, trajectory error by uh, choosing a simple uh, gains, and the analysis is trivial because it's made on the localization of the poles of the transfer function of the equivalent single input, single output system. In this case, we require the full machinery that we have seen on uh, stability, namely uh, Lyapunov, and not only Lasalle, but in the present case we need to use uh, uh, the further theorem that we just uh, highlighted uh, uh, in the introductory part of this uh, um, control lectures, namely the Barbalat lemma, which will guarantee that we can use Lasalle even in the present case where the uh, closed loop system uh, is a time-varying one and it's a time-varying one because there's a dependence on the desired trajectory and we will see this in detail. So the proof is much more com complicated. And in fact this controller, uh, it's uh, quite obvious, it will be very clear in the proof, uh, does not uh, imply or produce a complete cancellation of the uh, non-linearities of the dynamic models. Uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, uh, the, this type of controller is obtained by replacing everywhere 
velocities or acceleration appear uh, in a linear fashion in the model, so in the inertia term, and uh, the outer term of the correlation centrifugal factorization. And in this particular case, uh, the only velocity that uh, is present in the dissipative uh, term, then this should be set at the, their desired value. And we will see that this uh, has some consequence, uh, allows us to prove uh, asymptotic stability in a global sense. So, uh, as a consequence, since we are not cancelling nonlinearities, the closed loop system will uh, still be nonlinear and coupled. Uh, so, the message to take home in this case is that we don't need to do this uh, nonlinear cancellation by feedback in order to obtain um, global asymptotic tracking. Uh, and we don't need to have a linear and decoupled closed loop system behavior, although this has a lot of uh, nice um, consequences. So why we are introducing this alternative trajectory controller? Uh, essentially because this control law, as opposed to the feedback linearizing one, lends itself uh, relatively easy to uh, an adaptive version. So in case we don't know exactly the model parameter, um, or we don't know them at all, uh, we would like to move to adaptation. And we will see this uh, in the next lecture. Uh, one last comment. Uh, indeed, this control law, apart from the PD part, which is simply added to whatever uh, dynamic computation, so the first four terms cannot be computed by the standard newton euler algorithm. Why is that? Because the correlation centrifugal term, in fact, is evaluated both with the current velocity p dot and with the desired velocity p dot desired. So the standard Newton algorithm uh, takes only three arguments uh, in input. Uh, we will choose uh, the configuration Q, in, through which we use uh, we evaluate the gravity term, the inertia matrix, and also the uh, factorization matrix S. Uh, we enter as a second uh, argument Q dot because we need it inside this S matrix, but then we have no space for entering also a Q dot decide, which is different from the argument inside the matrix S. Uh, and then, of course, we may use uh, the acceleration desired Q double dot D. So, uh, we have already mentioned that there's a possibility of uh, extending the Newton algorithm, Newton Euler algorithm with a fourth uh, input, and uh, this global trajectory controller can, in fact, be evaluated with the modified Newton Euler algorithm. So, still efficient. So, uh, let's look at the proof. The proof, as I said, is quite. Uh, uh, difficult I mean, to follow because we require uh, uh, a number of mathematical tools. Anyway, let's try to look at uh, this together. So we uh, have uh, the robot dynamics and we include friction, viscous friction in this case, and the control law are there. So you close the loop by replacing the expression of u in the second line into the first uh, on the right hand side of the uh, equation in the first line. Uh, we will use uh, a Lyapunov candidate. The Lyapunov candidate is uh, a variation of what we have seen so far. So it includes uh, the control terms related to the proportional error. Uh, we, we have interpreted this as being a, uh, a virtual spring that brings the error to zero while moving in this case. Uh, the first term instead is uh, a modification of the kinetic energy because there is no Q dot as uh, external vector, there's the, instead the velocity error E dot. Still, this uh, function is positive definite and is zero only when position error and velocity error are both zero, so when we are following the trajectory. So it's a good candidate. Uh, its derivative is 
taken in a much similar way as we've seen before. Uh, so we have a term, uh, we have two terms coming from the first uh, addend. Um, one is with the time derivative of the inertia matrix, and then the second uh, is uh, the uh, contribution of two differentiation with the same scalar term, so uh, the factor 2 vanishes, and we have E dot transpose M of Q times E double dot, so the second derivative of the error. And then the um, second uh, component in the Lyapunov candidate produces uh, in the differentiation E transpose KP E dot, and we have seen this before. Now, we will uh, replace in uh, this expression, we have to evaluate uh, this time derivative along the uh, trajectory of the closed loop system. So uh, we uh, replace mq e double dot, but we have to build first this expression. So uh, if we uh, look at the closed loop system, uh, we can realize that uh, there's a inertia matrix multiplying q double dot on one side and q double dot desired on the other side so if you bring those two terms on the same side and you build the acceleration error e double dot and then you bring everything else on the other side and you uh, recognize that with a minus sign there's a the s matrix factorizing the cold centrifugal term multiplying q dot desired minus q dot so e dot and similarly for the uh, viscous terms and for the derivative terms, and in fact they play a similar role as we have already discussed earlier, and finally minus KPE. So we have this uh, expression and we can replace uh, MQ, M of Q E double dot into the derivative of the Lyapunov function. By doing this and using this Q symmetry property m dot minus 2s uh, in a quadratic form which now externally has e dot transpose e dot vanishes and what remains are the other terms cancel um, the last term in the cross product of e transpose and e dot so what remains is uh, as expected I would say um, the quadratic term with a minus sign and positive definite matrices KD and FV, FV because of physical uh, properties, KD because of our choice. So this is less or equal than zero. And it's zero only if and only if E dot is equal to zero. Now this looks like what we found, for instance, for the PD control law, but uh, we cannot now directly apply uh, LaSalle in order to make a conclusion about asymptotic stability. Uh, so far we have just shown stability of the error. Why is that? Because the system is uh, time-bearing because of the presence of the uh, trajectory error. Uh, so, sorry, of the time-bearing trajectory. Uh, in fact, if you look carefully at, for instance, at the expression of the Lyapunov candidate, you find uh, a dependence on E on E dot and on Q. Now we know that uh, the state vector for the system is a two n dimensional vector, so E is n dimensional, E dot is n dimensional, and Q is n dimensional. But of course, uh, one of these three quantities, in particular Q, I would say, uh, must be written in terms of the other one. And if we replace in all the expression Q by Q desired of t minus the error, so by the definition, and similarly for the velocity in terms of q dot desired of t minus the error, then we will rewrite uh, everything as a function of the error state, uh, e and e dot, and wherever you find uh, q desired of time, this will be uh, an autonomous time-varying quantities. So the Lyapunov candidate and the system in the closed loop is, still, uh, is a time-varying system. This is why we cannot uh, directly, and in general, since the trajectory is not periodic, we cannot apply uh, LaSalle theorem as such. So we have to go back to uh, previous 
block of slide, block number uh, 8 and the slide 10, which I will do right now. And uh, we have uh, on this uh, introductory part on stability of dynamical system, uh, we have considered also this time varying case. And in fact, we are exactly in the application of uh, trajectory tracking control for robots. Now, in this case, uh, we had this Barbalo lemma, which at that time, when we talk about this, uh, introduce uh, quickly this aspect, was a kind of uh, 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 unidentified flying object in a sense. Why do we care about this? But if we look carefully now, uh, we have exactly this situation. If we have a generic function, uh, function of the state and of time, like our candidate, which is lower bounded. And this is indeed true because our candidate is greater or equal than zero, so it's lower bounded from below from zero. And its time derivative is less or equal than zero, and this is what we have just shown. Then we can conclude that uh, as time goes by, so for time going to infinity, there will exist a limit for the function v. However, we have no insurance so far that this implies also that the derivative will have a limit equal to zero. So if there is a limit for v, we may assume that this is a constant, in fact, and, but this does not imply in general that v dot will go to zero. Why? This is a strange mathematical phenomenon. You could have, uh, let's say, fast oscillation, so the limit is still going to a constant, but the derivative is not going to zero. However, if in addition the second derivative of this function, in our case the Yapunov can, candidate, is bounded, then this is sufficient to uh, prove the, 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 the thesis of this lemma that uh, there exists um, a limit also for the derivative of the, this function, and this is equal to zero. Uh, as a corollary, then if we have a Lyapunov candidate, like in our case, that satisfy Barbara lemma. In fact, the first two assumptions, i and uh, double i, are satisfied. We need to prove that the third one is also holding. Then we can directly apply LaSalle theorem without caring about other further details. So, with this in mind, let's go back to our situation. And uh, we have the Lyapunov candidate. We have seen that this is a time varying function. The closed loop system, in fact, it's a time varying one. So uh, let's check uh, the assumption of Barbara Lema. So, uh, as we have said, uh, the first two conditions are uh, already satisfied. So the candidate, uh, Lyapunov candidate, is lower bounded and its time derivative is less or equal than zero then uh, we have to check the boundedness of the second derivative. Now, if we go back to this situation, we have that v dot is minus e dot transpose kd plus fv e dot. So we have to take the one more uh, derivative of this quantity in order to have v double dot. So v double dot is simply, uh, since the matrix inside are constant, and again, we have twice the derivation of the error terms out of e dot, so we have minus 2 e dot transpose kd plus fe e double dot. And our question now is uh, to ask if this quantity is bounded. Uh, first of all, we should uh, derive also the e double dot from uh, the equation. Now, uh, the first two assumptions that we are verified um, and the fact that V is bounded, in fact, implies that since uh, in the function V we have E and E dot uh, and everything is bounded, it means that also the uh, error and its time derivative are bounded. Now, if we assume, like it is reasonable, that the desired trajectory has a bounded velocity, otherwise uh, we would have a, a motion that uh, goes to infinity, in a sense, um, then being E dot bounded and Q dot's desired bounded, this implies also that 
the velocity itself of the robot will be bounded, so phi dot is bounded. There are other two properties that we are using, uh, namely intrinsic to uh, the dynamic model terms of any robot. So from the positive definiteness of the inertia matrix, this implies also that its inverse is both lower bounded and upper bounded by some quantities. So m of minus 1 of q is a bounded quantity. Um, moreover, the for any factorization of the Coriolis and centrifugal term, which are quadratic terms in the velocity. So if we take, factor out uh, one velocity q dot, the remaining matrix S is linear in q dot, so it can be bounded because of the trigonometric dependence on, on q by some positive constant alpha times the norm of q dot, which is uh, appearing linearly inside the matrix. So, uh, with all uh, this in mind, we look at the uh, second derivative of E double dot. And from the previous expression uh, of the previous slide, we have that E double dot, in fact, is uh, minus m to the minus 1, and then the following terms in the uh, um, square bracket. Now, the inverse of the inertia matrix is bounded in norm, so it's bounded itself. Uh, S times E dot is bounded because we can bound uh, S by alpha norm of Q dot, but then Q dot is bounded itself, E dot is bounded as well as E, and so all these terms that are present in this right hand side are bounded. And which implies that V double dot, uh, which is a, um, a form which contains E dot and E double dot, all these quantities are bounded, so we are in the assumption of Barbara Lemma. Which means that uh, the time derivative of the Lyapunov candidate, as time goes to infinity, goes to zero. So we can speak about the set where v dot is equal to zero. So this is the whole story, which is uh, the uh, argument used in LaSalle. So now, just forget everything, we apply LaSalle as such, so we, uh, we have seen that v dot is equal to zero if and only if v dot is equal to zero, so the previous um, proof uh, was meant to show that we can consider the set uh, of state V dot equal to zero as a converging set of states. Now uh, let's look what happens when V dot is equal to zero. So when E dot is equal to zero. So again we look at the closed loop dynamics that we had in the previous slide. Let's go back now. Uh, closed loop dynamic is expressed by the last equation. You can see that on the right hand side there are E dots that now goes to zero. So what remains is just uh, inertia matrix time E double dot equal minus Kp, the position error. So either the position error is zero, so the acceleration error will be zero, and we will remain in the set of state that zero, the derivative of the uh, Yapunov candidate. So this will be the invariant set of interest. Or uh, the error is different from zero, and so the acceleration error will be different from zero, and we will leave this set, so this will not be an invariant set. So this the conclusion follows from, from uh, LaSalle. Uh, so the largest invariant set contained in the set of state at zero, the derivative of the Lyapunov candidate, is given exactly by the origin uh, in the state space, in the state space of errors, so E equals zero and E dot equals zero. So global asymptotic tracking has been achieved. Global because we have not set any limitation to the initial error in our analysis. And this ends the proof. Now, uh, we may uh, consider some special case. So, uh, so, so far we have considered that we have a trajectory, a time bearing trajectory. What happens if this trajectory vanishes into a constant or just stops at some times? Do we have any simplification in the 
control log that we have introduced so far, and we will make a comparison between uh, uh, these two control laws, namely feedback linearization, which is, as I said, in the assumption of having a good model of your system, uh, the best performing controller, and uh, this uh, global asymptotic tracking controller that we have just talked about. Now, if you look at uh, feedback linearization control, so the computer torque with the PD controller, in fact, if you set Q dot desired and Q double dot desired equal to zero, namely that uh, you're considering the regulation task with QD constant, there are no special simplification. Why? Because you're canceling still the dynamics no matter how, so you're canceling the gravity term, the color is sensitive to term, you're pre-multiplying the PD controller by the inertia matrix evaluated at the uh, current configuration. Uh, within the square bracket, the Q double dots desired term vanishes because the acceleration desired is zero. And also, in the error of the velocity, you have a simplification. So you have, uh, instead of KD times Q dot desired minus Q dot, you have only minus Q dot remaining. So there are no special simplification when you're using feedback linearization in the regulation case. However, uh, this uh, controller still fully linearizes the system and provides asymptotic uh, stability of the error. So we have, uh, in fact, exponential stability with the coupled transient using this feedback linearization control. But no simplification. Instead, when we are using the alternative global controller, we see that uh, because of the presence of Q double dot desired and Q dot desired uh, inside the expression, all this goes to zero, and what remains is only the PD term, which has the same form as in the feedback linearization one, but no pre-multiplication by the inertia matrix, and the gravity term. So this we recover what we have seen already, namely that PD plus gravity cancellation control is a global asymptotic uh, stabilizer for the regulation task. So the trajectory tracking controller that we have seen so far uh, naturally reduced to what we have seen before. Why the feedback linearization controller remains the same even if we have regulation as a special case. In all these cases, however, we need information about the model complete model for trajectory tracking, at least the gravity term for um, regulation. Uh, we have seen that for regulation we can get rid of the information on the gravity by the iterative learning scheme or by using a PID controller with the uh, integral term saturated, the argument of the integral term being saturated or being uh, bounded in some, 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 some way. Uh, but with additional uh, condition on the gains. Uh, what if we don't know much about the full uh, model and we still uh, would like to have good tracking of a, a time-varying trajectory? This uh, lends uh, to the second part of this uh, lecture. In fact, the final part on trajectory tracking. So execution of the trajectory without having a model or without having a good model to start with. So the question is uh, if we have reduced or really very poor information on the, on the robot dynamic model, can we uh, hope to accurately reproduce uh, a sufficiently smooth joint space reference trajectory? This is our quest. And in fact, the answer as you could uh, imagine is yes, but uh, we require a special condition, operative condition. Namely, we re require that the motion is repetitive. So it's a task, it's a trajectory task that has to be repeated over a finite interval of time, a certain number uh, of, um, of time, actually a very large number. This is not a very unusual situation, for instance, in industrial application, because in fact, we, um, 
while you can reprogram for any new task the robot, but once the, an industrial robot has been programmed for a task, it repeats this task uh, uh, 10,000 times, I don't know, uh, a huge number of times. So we may allow to do the task a few number of times before getting into operation uh, until we achieve uh, enough good performance in tracking the desired trajectory. So we may allow uh, iterate or repetitive trials, not too many probably, uh, and learn, in a sense, uh, what we would like to, the command that allows us to do perfect tracking. So learning the inverse dynamics now in the general trajectory tracking case. So we have uh, the following uh, operative condition. Uh, we can we do a trial. We start from an initial uh, condition. Uh, of course, in this trial, we apply some controller. And uh, as is stated in the third uh, item here, uh, this controller will have a non-model based part, so something that we can apply without knowing the non the dynamic model of the robot. And we have seen that the standard solution here is to use a, a PD control all, decentralized in the sense that we can use diagonal gains. And we will add to this a fit forward, no? not a constant fit forward, but a time varying fit forward. To start with, we will use typically zero fit forward term, like we did in the iterative gravity compensation learning strategy. Now, we do once uh, the trajectory, uh, typically we uh, have an error, so we record the error along the trajectory over a finite amount of time, between zero and capital T, and we process this information offline in order to generate the new time varying free forward for the next iteration, for, for the k iteration to the k plus one iteration. There's a strong condition, however, that every iteration should start from the same initial position and typically with zero velocity. Okay, so under this condition, uh, what we, uh, if we are able to prove that we converge to the uh, right command, then uh, we will have what is called iterative trajectory uh, learning. So it's uh, iterative in the sense that you repeat several times the same motion task until you converge to the desired uh, high quality performance. So this uh, approach has been uh, pioneered by uh, a Japanese uh, researcher, Professor Arimoto. Uh, we've been doing some uh, activity uh, on this many years ago, and I would like to introduce, since the uh, methodology is uh, kind of uh, sophisticated, like uh, in most cases, when you have a, a simple control method, it's very hard to prove its uh, nice characteristics. Uh, instead, if you have, a, like in the feedback minimization controller, a very complex control law, typically, as a rule of thumb, the analysis is simpler. So the analysis of this uh, method of uh, iterative uh, trajectory learning is in general quite delicate. But we will, this is why I will present this uh, first on a simple system, uh, on a single input, single output, linear system. So we will use Laplace uh, methods in order to do the analysis. Uh, this is not just uh, an academic example because in fact this is a design method, so learn, I mean, acquiring information on how to uh, design the learning algorithm uh, in, in this case is exactly um, preliminary to the application of this to the robotic, uh, to a robot system. So uh, here you see a, a standard uh, linear control loop, you have a plant described by a transfer function, uh, all, all signals are scalars, so you have an input U and an output UI, you uh, do a, a unitary feedback loop, you compare the uh, evolution of the control output with the reference trajectory Y desired of T, you generate the error and you apply a controller, which in the Laplace domain is represented by another transfer function G of S, in order to generate the input uh, command to the plant. 
Now, the input command, however, in this case, uh, includes also uh, a feedforward term, which we called V, and in fact, VK will be the feedforward at the K iteration of the uh, uh, learning strategy. And uh, for the same reason, we give a special name to the feedback part of the control U, which will be labeled with a prime. So U prime of T is the uh, control uh, produced by the feedback controller. So in general, it will be a U prime K if we are doing this at this uh, at the K iteration. Then we have a learning algorithm which uses the previous uh, fit forward term BK and the current uh, control effort in the closed loop to generate the new offline, the new fit forward term BK plus one, then you increment the index K and you will apply this fit forward during the trajectory execution at the next trial. So this is the whole strategy and you have to initialize uh, at the first trial the fit forward and typically you set v1 of t uh, identically zero. And this is, a, in fact, the, this type of structure is very convenient because you can start with any controller that guarantees some stability to the closed loop system, but poor performance in terms of reproduction, the uh, output y uh, to follow a desired trajectory y desired. And then you can plug in this feed forward and do some trial without touching the original controller. So this is a very convenient application. In fact, this strategy has been used in industrial processes for many uh, other applications, wherever you have repeatability of tasks. So tasks that needs to be repeated over and over. Uh, there are a number of transfer functions that we need to use and of signal to be processed. So this is the closed loop uh, transfer function without uh, the uh, learning part, so without the feed forward, it's just the product of uh, the two transfer function in the direct path, P and C, and then one plus PC. So this is the closed loop um, uh, transfer function W of S, which relates the Laplace transform of the reference trajectory yd to the Laplace transform of the output y. Uh, the control law at iteration k uh, and the Laplace transform of these quantities will be labeled with a uk of s, which consists of uh, the feedback part, uk prime of s, and the feed forward part, vk of s. And of course, the uh, feedback part will be uh, processing by the controller, so uh, transfer functions G of S multiplying the uh, error at the iteration K in the Laplace domain. And uh, similarly, the output in the presence of both the feedback and the feedforward action uh, at iteration K, so YK of S in the Laplace domain, by the principle of superposition, you can uh, uh, apply a desired reference YD or uh, a feed forward uh, VK, if you apply both, you have the super superposition of the two transfer functions. So WS, which was the input output transfer function times YD of S, and the uh, closed loop transfer function from VK to Y, which is P of S, Y plus P, C. Now, in the next slide, uh, I'll, which I use as a whiteboard, so I'll go step to step, I will uh, prove this relationship, in particular uh, the input output transfer function and the uh, feed forward to output transfer function and something more for all, the, for those of you that have not uh, taken a basic course in automatic control or do not remember well this uh, concept. So, uh, first of all, remember that um, moving into the Laplace domain, so using this uh, transfer mathematical transformation, allows to deal with different linear differential equation, uh, solution of linear differential equation, by uh, moving them into uh, a polynomial equation, so making algebraic transformation and manipulation 
which are much simpler. And we will see what this means. So we will use the Laplace transform of all the signals involved. Indeed, uh, we represent the plant and the, uh, and the controller with their uh, transfer function. And we will uh, use uh, this notation with the complex uh, variable s for all this uh, listed uh, variable. So, uh, first of all, let's uh, find out why the closed loop transfer function of a unitary feedback loop, like the one that is shown in the, in the diagram, uh, takes the WS form that we have seen before. And you do computation really uh, by product and sums and isolating terms, like in when solving an algebraic system of equation. So y of s is the product of the uh, transfer function of the plant times the input u of s. The input is the sum of the feedback part of the control and of the feedforward term. So uh, apart from uh, uh, iteration, so the k is not here in this case, so we have v of s plus u prime of s. Uh, U prime itself is uh, the output of the controller, so feedback controller, so G of S times the error. And the error is the, the difference between the reference trajectory YD uh, and the uh, output uh, trajectory Y. Now at this stage you find that uh, in this uh, equation you have Y of S on both sides of the equation. So you can isolate, bring the, y, the second Y of S on the left hand side and obtain uh, this expression. So you have 1 plus the product of P of S and G of S times Y of S equal whatever is left on the right hand side. And now you divide by the factor multiplying the Y of S and you obtain in fact what we have uh, seen before. So the uh, in this feed forward plus feedback uh, structure where the feed forward later on will come from the learning algorithm uh, over the iteration. So y of s is uh, w of s, which has the form p times c over 1 plus pc, uh, plus another transfer function, which is the one from the feed forward input to the uh, output, which is simply p over 1 plus pc. You see that all the, if you uh, now rationalize this trans this transfer function because the numerator and the denominator are both uh, rational functions, so they are ratio of polynomial expression. So you can um, rationalize all this transfer function. Uh, you will see that the denominator is always the same. So any closed loop transfer function, no matter which input signal and output signal you're considering, have the same denominator which is associated to the poles of the closed-loop system and the poles are associated to the dynamics of the closed-loop uh, behavior. Now, uh, let's do uh, two more computation, which will be useful later on, and uh, consider uh, the expression of the feedback control at iteration k. So we have u prime k of s, uh, this will be uh, the output of the controller, so G of S times YD of S minus uh, YK of S should be in this case. Um, so the first term remains the same. Uh, YK of S is uh, the um, result of the process of the plant processing the input, so we have to multiply by P, and then the input is has the two contribution VK and UK prime. So uh, again, you see that UK prime uh, is at both sides of this uh, uh, identity, algebraic identity. So we can isolate uh, UK prime on the left hand side, it will be 1 plus PC UK prime, and then all the rest. All the rest remain on the, on the other side, then we divide by this factor, like we did before, and we obtain again the UK prime uh, as a contribution of two transfer functions, one from the desired input and one from 
the uh, feedforward term, and uh, we will um, call the first um, transfer function W of C, because it relates the desired trajectory to the actual feedback command, uh, while uh, the other transfer function is just the opposite of the input-output transfer function that we have seen before. So this is not new, just a minus sign, because there's a minus in the loop, in fact, uh, going from uh, VK to UK prime. Uh, and finally, uh, for the error at iteration k, uh, we have a, a similar expression. So a of k of s is yd minus y of k. Again, there's a mistake here. Uh, y of k uh, is uh, uh, what we have just computed. In fact, it's uh, w of s uh, of y desired plus uh, w of v, uh, the transfer function uh, above, times vk. And uh, now we have a yd appearing in two terms, so it's 1 minus w of s will be the transfer function between uh, the desired uh, output trajectory and the error at iteration k. And in fact, if you look at the expression of w of s, which is pc over 1 plus pc, 1 minus w of s is another transfer function, which is called the error transfer function in, in the elementary theory of uh, um, feedback uh, linear systems. So this uh, full expression is y, uh, 1 over 1 plus pc. So we have uh, all uh, set, and I think that if you look again to this slide, even those that are not familiar with this concept will find uh, things more uh, clear. So, let's go back to our uh, learning update law. We have to define the way in which the feedforward term is being changed from one iteration to the other. And uh, the method that we proposed was uh, combining through suitable filters, in the sense they are transfer function, um, the previous feedforward term, VK, plus the control effort that we had during the K iteration. Remember that this operation is done offline, so we have stored uh, the previous uh, feedforward over the whole trajectory between 0 and T. We have stored the control effort um, the feedback control effort that we have applied during the previous iteration. Uh, now these signals can be processed in the Laplace domain and they can be uh, filtered by suitable uh, alpha of s and beta of s. And since we are doing this offline and we have at the disposition all the sample at, over the whole trajectory uh, duration 0 capital T, then uh, a, a generic sample may use information that comes from samples that are before and after that instant, just because all the samples have been stored from the previous iteration. So this is the general format. Of course, alpha and beta are the design parameters in this uh, update law, uh, and mm, they should satisfy some condition in order to guarantee that uh, we will converge to some desired behavior. And in fact, uh, we can write uh, with some mathematics that we will detail in the next slide, uh, the recursive expression of the feedforward term. So Vk plus 1, you can see, uh, takes the form uh, written in the slide uh, as a function of the desired trajectory, because it will depend on the desired trajectory, of course, uh, and on the previous um, feedforward term. And similarly, we have a recursive expression also for the error, because in fact we would like that the error converge to zero or converge to some uh, small values, if possible. And this is the expression that we will prove in the next slide. But you can see here that there are uh, some similarities. In fact, uh, in this recursive expression, when we are looking at the same variable, so at instant k and k plus 1, we see that there's a common factor beta minus alpha of s, w of s, appearing while the other term depends only on the desired trajectory. And if the desired trajectory is 
uh, repeated from trial to trial, so it's always the same, uh, when we look at the variation, this term will vanish. Again, we will see this uh, in the next slide in more detail. So, now, uh, looking at uh, this uh, expression, we can say that if uh, the uh, module of this uh, complex number B, B of beta of s minus alpha of s w of s is less than 1, uh, and this could be for any value of s, in particular if you substitute to s j omega, so you look at the frequency analysis, if this is true for all frequencies, or at least if it's true for a certain interval of frequency, then you will have convergence in that domain of frequency, or for all frequency, as k goes to infinity. Convergence means that bk plus 1 in the Laplace domain, but also, of course, in the time domain, will converge to a specific profile, as well as uh, the error uh, will converge to a specific profile, hopefully identically to zero. And in fact, the Laplace transform of the limit value for these two uh, scalar signals uh, is given by uh, these two expressions. Please note that, uh, for instance, in the second one, if beta equal 1 can be chosen so that we guarantee that the contraction condition uh, is satisfied by some choice of alpha and by beta equal 1, then since 1 minus beta is at the numerator, uh, this term will vanish and the error at steady, st at steady state of this iterative uh, uh, learning strategy will be zero. So we will have perfect trend. Indeed, if we choose beta different from 1, then we will have some error which uh, changes expression depending on the frequency of interest. So, uh, before making these conclusions, uh, let's look at uh, how we find the recursive expression for the feedforward term vk and for the error pk, so the uh, formula that I uh, written directly in the previous slide. So again, uh, using the whiteboard, so uh, we do the individual step in this derivation. So, uh, first of all, uh, the update law is vk plus 1 equal alpha uk prime, remember the uk prime is the feedback control effort at iteration k, plus beta of s vk. Indeed, uk prime is nothing else than c times the error at iteration k, and uh, the error at iteration k, we have uh, written uh, its uh, expression in terms of transfer function, is the error transfer function, so it's 1 over 1 pc, 1 plus pc, uh, yd minus the transfer function from the feedforward to the error uh, times vk. And now you see that uh, we have vk in, uh, in, two, in two parts, and we substitute the expression for the transfer function that we found before, and we have exactly this recursive expression where uh, a c over 1 plus p c multiplies the desired uh, trajectory in the Laplace domain and the factor beta minus minus alpha times w of s appears in front of the previous uh, feed forward term and on this quantities in fact we do contraction while uh, a bit more involved is uh, finding the recursive expression for the error a k, so a k plus 1 as a function of y d and e k. So first of all, the definition of the error at uh, the iteration k is y d minus y k. y k, so the output of the system during that iteration, is uh, uh, the output of the plant, p of s, multiplied by the input, which is the sum of the feedforward and the feedback terms. Now, from this equation, we can uh, isolate vk. So we uh, bring uh, yd to the other side, we change sign, we divide by p, and then we subtract uk prime. And so we have uh, that 
uh, this equivalent uh, expression that we will use uh, in the following vk is given by this uh, expression in terms of the error and of the desired um, uh, trajectory output and also of the uh, case uh, feedback control action. Now, uh, if we look at the output at the next iteration, so k plus 1, this will be given by the output of the plant times the output at that iteration, which is the sum, uh, the input at that iteration, which is the sum of the feed forward vk plus 1 and the feedback action u prime k plus 1. And vk plus 1 has the update law, so we replace this with a prime uh, a times u prime k plus beta alpha times uk prime plus beta vk. And now uh, in vk we substitute the previous expression. Why are we doing this? Because by doing uh, so we will end up with uh, an expression that will be used for finding the recursion for the error. So we do this substitution, uh, there's still a bit of simplification to do. So we have the first term is P, uh, P is in front of everything, then alpha times UK, UK prime, UK prime of course is the controller times the error AK, then we have beta times BK and we replace now the expression of BK of the previous um, identity, so 1 over P times YD minus EK, and then uh, again minus uh, beta times uh, the UK prime, which is C times EK, and finally plus uh, um, UK prime, which is written as C times EK plus 1. I think everything is there. Uh, also the parentheses are set in the right way. Now you can uh, see, for instance, that uh, the terms yd, uh, which appears in one of the elements, is pre-multiplied by the uh, plant process, the plant transfer function, so p of s times beta times 1 over p. So it's only multiplied by beta. So this observation is useful because when we are finally writing the error at iteration k plus 1, which is yd minus yk plus 1, and we used the yk plus 1 before, so we have yd minus uh, wherever we find yd, which was just beta times yd of s, uh, and then uh, you substitute all the, the, the rest of the expression with a minus sign, uh, grouping what depends on AK and what depends on AK plus 1. And finally, in blue, I highlighted uh, where AK plus 1 is found uh, in, on both sides of this identity. So you bring the second term to the left-hand side. So you have a 1 plus PC times AK plus 1. And then you divide by this and you obtain the final formula. So this was a bit more complex, as you can see as before, and the final formula has one term which depends only on yd, and the second term, which is uh, uh, an elaboration of uh, the previous error at iteration k, by the same filtering action beta minus alpha w of s. So, uh, now we have given the recur recurrent, uh, recursive expression of the feed forward and of the error, and we have said that under the contraction condition, we have some limit values for these uh, signals. So let's prove that this is true. So we have the recursive expression written again uh, in this slide. And now we make a difference between uh, these values and the values that they had at the previous uh, iteration. When we make the difference between this, of course, what is repetitive in the expression just vanishes. So we compute the variation from k to k plus 1. For the feed forward term, we have delta vk plus 1, which is defined by vk plus 1 minus vk. And vk has the similar expression in terms of vk minus 1. So uh, the terms, depending on yd, is the same. 
<laughs> and in the subtraction uh, is being eliminated. So what remains is beta minus alpha w of s times the variation uh, at iteration k, which is vk minus vk minus 1. And the same story happens for the error. I don't have to comment it again. And now you see that it's the variation that uh, contracts. So if the uh, assumption holds, so that uh, the absolute, the, the modulus of this uh, complex um, factor is uh, strictly less than one, then the sequence of vk and the sequence of vk converge to some limit values. How do we compute these values? We just take the first two uh, relations in this uh, slide and uh, set vk equal vk plus 1 equal v infinity and ek equal uh, ek plus 1 equal e infinity. So you write the following one and now you again isolate, bring, uh, isolate v infinity and e infinity, so doing again algebraic manipulation and you find the two expressions that I gave two slides ago. Now, we make uh, the same consideration that we've uh, done before. So now look what happens if we are highlighting uh, some of this expression. So first of all, if beta is equal to 1, then the limit error will go to 0. So we will do perfect tracking. And in the same way, when beta is equal to 1 in the first expression, you will see that the numerator and the denominator of the second factor uh, becomes the same, so they can be eliminated, and what remains is just yd over p, which is nothing else than the inverse dynamics of our plan. In fact, at steady state, the feed forward is exactly the desired trajectory divided by the process. And if we put this as input to the process, uh, there will be a cancellation between the PS at the numerator and the denominator and the output will be exactly the desired one. So we find very uh, nice uh, that under these conditions the error will go to zero and the input will be the inverse dynamic input. Of course this is a simple input single output case but the same type of behavior uh, with some difficulty related to the fact that we have non-linear dynamics and multi-input, multi-output system, will be found on the robot application. So let's summarize our uh, analysis. So if the choice beta equal 1 is admissible, so it guarantees together with alpha that the contraction condition is satisfied, then there will be zero tracking error uh, when the scheme converge and the inverse co uh, command, the, the feed forward command will be the inverse dynamics command that we have learned over the iteration. As you can see, uh, like in real life, doing errors is more helpful in order to learn better than doing things right from the first in the first place. So this let's say, philosophical consideration can be applied also to this type of control laws. Now, uh, what about alpha? Indeed, uh, if you can set alpha equal 1 over w of s in this, uh, in this formulas under the assumption that beta is equal to 1, then you would do one, one time uh, under some stabilizing controller uh, the execution of the trajectory you record the error and then in the next iteration you will converge to zero error of course uh, this assumption implies that you know perfectly the plant but in fact uh, what you need to know is not the open loop plant but the closed loop transfer function so the close to plant under the action of your controller. And this makes a huge difference because while it is true that perfect knowledge of W is there only if you have 
perfect knowledge of P and of course of C, but this is, tr this is uh, trivial because the C is your controller, so it's what you have designed, so you know very well what is the structure of C. So, uh, as I was saying, um, while this is true, however, the closed loop system is much more, uh, let's say, um, has a behavior that you can expect uh, much better than the original plan. This is the whole um, benefit of using feedback in order to control the system. All the system tends to control, tend to behave like you expect. So what I'm saying is that you don't need an accurate knowledge of P in order to take, make a choice of alpha, which is similar to 1 over Ws, so it's not exactly that, and you don't need much information about the original plant at this point, so you don't converge in one iteration, but the number of iterations will be a finite one, uh, and the performance will uh, improve over and over. So, uh, all this, of course, is true if you're allowed to use beta equal 1. If, instead, you are not able to converge when you're using b of uh, b equal, equal 1, this uh, approach allows you to get convergence, although you tolerate some error. And, typically, this happens uh, when you have high-frequency dynamics that you neglect in your modeling, uh, beta of s is there in order to cancel out or filter out, better said, this high frequency dynamics, which would bar the possibility of convergence. So, uh, you get convergence, the price you pay for getting convergence is that you don't reproduce exactly high frequency dynamics of your trajectory. Okay? So, uh, final consideration, as you can see, uh, I've been talking about um, a linear concept so far, even one input, one output only, but in the synthesis of each pair of filter, alpha and beta, for each joint of a robot, still this uh, classic tool from a, a linear system can be used. For instance, you can use Nyquist plot to show the behavior or the approximate behavior of the term beta minus alpha of w of s, and if the Nyquist plot, like in one of the two um, graphs in the, in, the, in, in the picture, is all internal to the unit circle, then you will have uh, the contraction and the uh, scheme, the iterative scheme will converge. Uh, if not, uh, you may have convergence only for a certain number of frequency up to uh, an upper bound, let's say omega z. Okay, so to conclude, uh, let's see how this um, um, method is being used for designing an iterative learning controller for an n-dimensional nonlinear robot. So suppose that we model the robot uh, as the first equation which is including uh, the inertia of the motor, so we assume that there is no elasticity at the joint, so we know that uh, adding the inertia is like adding a diagonal term, a constant diagonal term to the link inertia matrix M of Q, and suppose there is some uh, viscous friction present, and that this part uh, is uh, reasonably known, uh, and then the other terms are the one that uh, we've seen before. And suppose that uh, the first feedback controller or the feedback controller that you're using is a PD control with uh, a partial cancellation of gravity. So we are using, of course, G hat because we don't know exactly the expression of G. And similarly, we don't know exactly the expression of the constant term in the uh, other part of the model, namely of Bm and Fv. But if we approximate the system around the given trajectory, uh, we end up for each joint having a transfer function of this form. So this will be the W of i of s, and uh, you can see that the numerator is given by the PD gains that 
have been chosen by us, the denominator is a second order system with an uncertain inertia of the motor, we had uh, an uncertain uh, first order term, which is, however, dominated, can be dominated by KDI and a known term uh, at the degree zero. So you can see that this transfer function bears, um, contains only little information of the original system, but maybe enough to design the uh, learning filters joint by joint and then through uh, iteration to have a convergence to a reasonably good execution of the original trajectory. Uh, what is missing is the initialization. As we said, in the worst case, you just set V1 to 0 for the feed forward. But in fact, if you have any information about the uh, dynamics of your robot, then you will use this in a inverse dynamic fashion. Of course, all hats may uh, represent estimated value, whatever best estimate value you have. If you don't have any estimated value at all, you just simply set V1 equals zero and you will have, probably, you will need more trials to converge. Now, uh, I'm presenting uh, some uh, experimental results that we obtained uh, many, many years ago on a prototype that was uh, uh, given to our department, which at the time uh, was named uh, DIS, so Departamento di Informatica Sistemistica, not DIAG like, like now. So this robot was a six-hour, uh, six-level joint robot, and we perform experiment with a joint two and three, so in a planar vertical plane. Uh, another feature of uh, this robot, uh, the, uh, this prototype, uh, was that uh, there were springs uh, mounted in the structure balancing most of the gravity, so about 90% of the gravity. Uh, it uses harmonic drive, so there are also effects uh, in, in the high frequency domain that were neglected, and this is another reason why the beta function uh, filter is needed. And the most striking point is that this system had a high level of dry friction, so friction not modeled by viscous one, and very, uh, very time-bearing over the iteration. So uh, this was using, it, if I remember well, at that time, uh, almost 50% uh, of the total torque was needed to overcome this type of friction, or kind of a non-efficient situation. So uh, this system uh, lends itself to a, a very nice application of learning control, because uh, the model that you may derive following the Euler-Lagrange uh, equation or methodology, it's not really capturing this uh, part essential part of dry friction of your dynamics. And identifying this part is also quite difficult. So we uh, moved both joints uh, with uh, the following uh, um, velocity and position uh, profile. And you can see that the velocity reaches a, a top value of 50 degree, degree per second, and then reverse is a trapezoidal profile. Uh, and the position uh, moves from the initial configuration to uh, 160 degrees and then comes back. So this is a periodic trajectory. So from one uh, execution to the other, we start from the same zero velocity and same configuration and we end at the end of the nine seconds or so of trajectory in the same configuration, at least ideally. Okay. So the fact that we are reinitializing the system is obtained by choosing a periodic trajectory. The reinitialization will not be exact, so there should be some perturbation to the scheme, but the scheme is robust enough to uh, guarantee convergence anyway. So <coughs> the <coughs> control architecture was very outdated, I would say. We were using the DSP. We're using an IBM PC XT286. You may have never heard about this. The robot itself had DC motors with current amplifiers, so we were commanding current in place of uh, torques. 
and it used uh, resolvers and tachometers. So, has no at that time they had no, no digital encoders, and they have already still mounted tachometers. But this, uh, as I said, were presenting some some noise effect. So you see the uh, full uh, uh, organization. So on the PC we did supervision and learning. So offline we were processing the data that were acquired uh, from the experiment through our sensor and through the um, motor commands. Uh, the, the control in real time was handled by the DSP uh, device uh, and uh, everything worked uh, at the frequency rate for the DSP of 400 microseconds and you can see also other conversion rate between uh, uh, analog and digital results. For instance, R2D is the resolution of the resolver to digital 16-bit used for the 360 degrees. So, uh, the, the results looks like uh, like this. So these are joint 2 on the left and joint 3 on the right and these are the error profile that we uh, obtain at the iteration 1, at the iteration 3, 6 and 12. And you can probably recognize that the initial error was not so large so we have a peak of uh, about 1 degree but this value is being reduced uh, over the iteration to uh, about 0 0.2 degrees, so uh, a factor of 5 with 12 iteration. So the error is going to be reduced. There is some residual error left because we have used here uh, a beta different from 1 because otherwise the system did not converge because of the presence of uh, high frequency dynamics in the elasticity of the joints and other effects that were not considered. But still we get some convergence and similarly, uh, in this uh, other pairs of plots, again on the left for joint 2, on the right for joint 3, on top the feed forward over the iteration and uh, below the feedback action over the iteration. And indeed the feed forward at iteration 1 is 0, so usually no plots, but uh, while moving from iteration 3 to 6 to 12, you see that there is increase of the feed forward. The scale is in ampere because these are currents. So we get uh, from uh, 0 uh, ampere uh, to about 5 at iteration 3 and then 10 and then over 10 at iteration 12. Both at least for joint 1 and for, uh, for joint 2, sorry, and for joint 3, uh, the value of ampere are a little bit less, so but at the 12th iteration we are around uh, a peak of 5, 6 ampere, ampere. So the feed forward is acquiring the inverse dynamics of the plant needed to reproduce with uh, a reduced error the desired trajectory. At the same time, and this is also interesting, the control effort of the feedback term is being reduced because the feedback term is there because there's an error in executing the trajectory, if this error is going to zero, of course, the feedback effort is going to zero as well. And in fact, complementary to what you have seen on the feed-forward plots, the feedback plots shows a decrease from iteration 1 to 3 to 6 to 12 of the control effort due to feedback on joint 2 and on joint 3. And this uh, concludes uh, this part of the course. Thank you for listening.